Hello. I am going to talk about the scripture of what we might call the second last Sunday of the year, of the church year. Um, next Sunday will be the Feast of Christ the King. Um, by the way, I hope you're not uh, dropping dead from your Black Friday shopping. Of course, who drops dead anymore? We just let the fingers do the walking, don't we? Um, at any rate, I um, hope uh, that the Lord is touching your heart in very healthy, healthy ways uh, this season. Touching your heart with kindness and love and with some healthy thoughts of end times. Maybe, maybe not like the end of the world, but uh, the end of our own lives as we know it. I always hate to say uh, Say, let's just think of dying. Well, no, we're going to think of living. Even the people who are dying want life. They don't necessarily want more of what we have. Um, as a matter of fact, many um, uh, can commiserate with each other. And sometimes I feel that way too. Lord, take me out of this. Um, but as long as he's giving us life, we're not just going to get through it. We're going to live it until we truly have life, full life, uh, unabashed, uh, joy-filled, uh, painless, um, happy life uh, forever. Uh, but this Sunday uh, really hits us with the, uh, the message of what it means to face God at the end. Um, I don't know if we do enough of that, facing God. Of course, we also call that prayer, um, which means, again, spending time with the Lord, sitting, listening, um, speaking to Him. But I always suggest that we spend more time listening than we do speaking. Uh, but if you're like me, you probably do more speaking than listening. But at any rate, there's a beautiful first reading for this Sunday uh, uh, from Proverbs 31. And oftentimes it'll be chosen uh, as a reading for um, a mom's funeral. Uh, it's about happy of uh, the husband of a really good wife. And um, what praises are sung in her honor. But this is a woman who spent her entire life giving, giving, giving so that others might live and others might do well. And um, the wisdom books praise that kind of a person. Uh, would, would we not like to uh, hear this said of us, give her, give him a reward uh, for her labors and let her works praise her? Um, Again, that's a life lived in preparation for life forever. Uh, the second reading from Sunday, and I usually don't go through all through, oh, through all three readings, but each one has some powerful stuff in it. And uh, this uh, second reading for Sunday, uh, there's an expression, Paul is warning the Thessalonians to be ready for the second coming of Christ. Now, when he speaks of the second coming, he means um, the second coming. He means the final coming of Christ to take us all home. Uh, but we could certainly apply this to the uh, maybe 100 billion people who have gone before us already into the kingdom. Uh, he says, uh, you, concerning times and seasons, you have no need uh, for anything to be said to you because you yourselves know very well that the Lord, uh, the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. Now, Jesus is not beneath um, um, ugly images about himself if he's conveying a message that he wants to be heard. Um, and Paul is saying that Jesus is the thief uh, because he comes, whenever he comes, it's unexpected, it seems. Um, people can have been dying for days, weeks, months, maybe longer. 
But when it finally happens, oh, we just buried somebody um, a couple of weeks ago who was 104 years old. The family was pretty good about it all, but still there was some sadness because they miss grandma. When I usually say anymore, when a loved one um, leaves us, you know, God bless that person and congratulations to that one who has gone into, uh, gone into the kingdom back home. And, um, but I'll say, but I do commiserate with family and friends who miss her or who miss him because they meant so much to us, this side of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, but I can't in all honesty say that I'm sorry for the other person. Um, even if they're young, who can be sorry for a loved one going home to the kingdom? And if you really think that what uh, they would be living is better <laughs> than what they are living at home in heaven, whoa, we got to do some rethinking about where we stand with our attitudes toward life and death. Um, and then finally, there's the gospel, of course, which is challenging with Jesus coming uh, <clears throat> after having given uh, this uh, landowner, having given some of his wealth to several of his servants, expecting that they handle this wealth in such a way where they're going to be productive with it and that when the landlord re or the owner of the estate returns, um, he's going to find himself enriched uh, by what these fellows have done for him. Now, I, I want to say that underneath, I, I feel there's almost a mantra of uh, Jesus saying, ready or not, here I come. Well, certainly it was true. He returned home and very... I guess not. One of them really might, you might say, was expecting him. But two of them were prepared for his return by having done well with the talents given them. Now, <clears throat> talent, by the way, back in Jesus' time is a measure of money that equals 20 years of an ordinary man's wages. 20 years. So he gave one of them 10 talents, Oh, another one five, and another one one talent. As we know, the first two did well with the money given them, and they are given responsibility for much, much more. Meaning you and I have been given whatever by Almighty God. Everything good we have is from Him, and He intends that we use it very, very well. Not for self, but for others. Uh, and having done that, God's going to say, come on home. But then uh, there was the last fellow who was, now he wasn't wicked. Uh, <laughs> I uh, always think, boy, the, um, not always, but often think, Scripture knows how to lay the trip on us. <laughs> so it's, sometimes I feel it's all I can do to avoid doing bad. But it's the things that we are supposed to do well, the good things we're supposed to do, that will also be judged on. So this fellow buries, um, you know, uh, how many thousands of dollars worth of money just so that it won't disappear and he doesn't have to give his master nothing when he returns home. He can give him something. He can give him what he had been given. That. Uh, infuriated, of course, the um, owner of the estate. And it ends up that this uh, fellow, he maybe was very lazy besides being afraid. And a lot of people are afraid to use their gifts for others. Not the least of which reason, some of us are lazy. Uh, we're afraid to get involved. We're afraid if I do something, give something, more is going to be asked of me than what I just gave. Um, uh, that's not supposed to be on our minds and hearts as followers of Jesus. We give, give, give because, to be honest, we get, get, get from giving. 
Uh, that's just the way the Lord is. He won't be outdone. So here I am, and you better be ready, the Lord says, to um, give me everything you got. Which, in parentheses, is saying, and Jesus is saying, is more than what we gave you at the beginning. You have more to give me now um, because I gave you a lot to work with. And, of course, you have me, um, you have gifted me, hopefully, with loved ones. You've brought people home uh, to the kingdom with you. That's why I made you. Not just to get your own mm, home, but to help others come home too. Again, God bless you. And have great, great holidays. Uh, I want to remind you once again uh, of our Thanksgiving Mass being Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And uh, we don't have the Mass on Thanksgiving Day. In the evening, we hope we'll be more accommodating to people who might want to do football games and parades and so on. Oh, let me see. Well, I don't know if this was worth waiting for at all, but it's a bit of a Thanksgiving joke. What kind of music did the pilgrims listen to? Plymouth Rock. <laughs> Bye now.